Good morning, this is PJ and I am here for our daily lectionary readings. We have our three readings. Psalms 90, 12 through 17 is our psalm reading. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verses 1 through 21 is our Old Testament reading. And Hebrews chapter 3 verses 7 through 19 is our New Testament reading. And remember, with it being Thursday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, looks ahead for what is going to be happening in church on Sunday. So let us take a listen in to our scripture readings for the day. Psalms 90, 12 through 17. Oh, teach us to live well. Teach us to live wisely and well. Come back, God. How long do we have to wait? And treat your servants with kindness for a change. Surprise us with love at daybreak that will skip and dance all the day long. Make up for the bad times with good times. We've even seen enough evil to last a lifetime. Let your servants see what you're best at. The way you rule and bless your children. And let the loveliness of our Lord, our God, rest on us, confirming the work that we do. Oh yes, affirm the work that we do. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verses 1 through 21. Moses called all of Israel together, and he said to them, Attention, Israel, listen obediently to the rules and the regulations I am delivering to your listening ears today. Learn them. Live them. God, our God, made a covenant with us at Horeb. God didn't just make this covenant with our parents. He made it also with us, with all of us who are alive right now. God spoke to you personally out of the fire on the mountain. And as I stood between God and you to tell you what God said, you were afraid, remember, of the fire and wouldn't climb the mountain. He said, I am God, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of a house of slave. No other gods, only me. No carved gods of any size, shape, or form, or anything, whatever. Whether of things that fly, or walk, or swim. Don't bow down to them and don't serve them because I am God. You're God and I'm a most jealous God. I hold parents responsible for any sin that they pass on to their children, to the third, and yes, even to the fourth generation. But I'm lovingly loyal to the thousands who love me and keep my commandments. Not using the name of God, your God, in curse or silly banter. God wouldn't put up with that irreverent use of his name. No working on the Sabbath. Keep it holy, just as God, your God, commanded you. Work six days doing everything you have to do. But on the seventh day is a Sabbath, a rest day. No work. Not you, your son, your daughter, your servant, your maid, your ox, your donkey, or any of your animals and not even the foreigner visiting your town. That way, your servants and maids will get the same rest as you. Don't ever forget that you were slaves in Egypt, and God, your God, got you out of there in a powerful show of strength. That's why God, your God, commands you to observe the day of Sabbath rest. Respect your father and mother. God, your God, commands it. You'll have a long life. The land that God is giving you will treat you well. No murder, no adultery, no stealing, no lies about your neighbor, and no coveting your neighbor's wife, and no lusting for his house, field, servant, maid, axe, or ox, or donkey either. Nothing that belongs to your neighbor. The New Testament reading today comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verses 7 through 19. Let us listen in. Now, if we could only keep a firm grip on this bold confidence, we're the house. That's why the Holy Spirit says today, please listen. Don't turn a deaf ear as the bitter uprising, the time of wilderness testing. 
Even though they watched me at work for 40 years, your ancestors refused to let me do it my way. Over and over they tried my patience. As I was provoked, oh so provoked, I said, they'll never keep their minds on God. They refused to walk down my road. Exasperated, I vowed, they'll never get where they're going. Never be able to sit down and rest. So watch your step, friends. Make sure there is no evil unbelief lying around and that you will trip up and throw you off course, diverting you from the living God. For as long as God's still calling it today, keep each other on your toes so sin does, does not slow down your reflexes. If we only keep our grip on the sure thing we started out with, we're in this with Christ for the long haul. These words keep ringing in our ears. Today, please listen. Don't turn a deaf ear as your bitter uprising. For who were the people who turned a deaf ear? Weren't they the very ones Moses led out of Egypt? And who was God provided with for 40 years? Wasn't it those who turned a deaf ear and ended up corpses in the wilderness? And when he swore that they never get where they were going, wasn't he talking to the one who turned a deaf ear? They never got there because they never listened and never believed. And here ends our readings for the day.